Harold and Brad. Harold and Brad. Windy City Field Makers. Harold and Brad. Windy City Field Makers. Harold and Brad. Windy City Field Makers. Harold and Brad. I'll, I'll tell you what really did it. That and I talked about this. It's the it's the story. You know, it's the way you told the story. A good yeah. story, well told, with no a, doubt, no a doubt. pertinent uh, a subject matter, and and the silence at the end. So it was all visual, and the scene turning, and it turned out to be, oh no, you know, but. Look at this. So it was irony in the end, and it was all done uh, visually. It was it was beautiful, and the music. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that, Harold. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I believe that, man. I think it's about if you tell a good story, right. people will forgive. You got low production value. You don't have a lot of money. You don't have big stars. If you tell a, a an emotionally uh, story, I think the definition of a story is an emotionally charged sequence of events with a beginning, middle, and end, and a thematic through line. And if you can tie that up and connect with people, you got something hot. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. We shot one, we go 35 millimeter, man. You can shoot a film today on your phone. It's no excuse to not get out there and get it. Oh, we were talking about this last week. We interviewed, I don't know if you know, we interviewed Tam and Kev a couple weeks ago. And we were talking okay. about the same thing. We just shot like, uh, shot, I shot a short film on first year at DePaul. And it was right before cell phones. Yeah, before cell phones had cameras. They had like janky cameras that got like a second. You couldn't really shoot anything. But to your point, you had to have a 35 millimeter camera. I mean, we shot on 35, you had to have an actual camera, develop the film. And now with technology, you could just, you can get so many things out there and pop in. That to your point, there's, there's no excuse. If you want to tell a story, there's no, no excuse, excuse not to tell a story. Man, you could go special effects on that. You can do whatever you want these days. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, now that makes more competition, yes. but you should always embrace competition, man. It right. makes you hone your craft even tighter. So has the filmmaking process gotten a lot easier since then, or is it still different challenges uh, you face uh, these years later? I believe there's still challenges and, and talking to cats. Wow, that's a good question, brother. That's a good question. Um, yes, there's still challenges. Yeah. Uh, I think there'll always be challenges. Right. Uh, I want there to always be challenges because that is where you really get better. You know, yes. if everything is is great, I used to, and that's the truth, I used to think success was, now I can kick back, I'm leisure, I made it, I don't have to do anything. That's not success, man. Success, and I think Earl Nightingale said this, success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. Right, right, right. Progressive realization. So if you're on the journey, if you're learning, if you're failing, if you're winning, if you're losing, but you're moving forward towards a goal or a dream, you're already a success. Oh, no we question. think success is the end goal. Success is the journey. Yeah. So yeah, there, there are still challenges Challenges. The challenges change, and I think more than anything, my perspective on the challenges has changed. Right. Before I saw them as problems and obstacles, and they were setbacks, and but now I embrace them, and I say, okay, there's a lesson here. I just have to find yes. what it, you know. So yeah, that, that is so true, and yeah, it's it's uh, the glass is half full type of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so let, let's talk about. Uh, uh, your, your other film, uh, the, the name escapes me right now. Uh, it was at the ABFF a few years ago. We was down there in New York. Remember? You know, oh, oh uh, the night before. The night Bachelor. before. Yeah, that was awesome. So let's talk about that. You, it seems like it was a, a you, you wrote it with black characters in mind, but cast yeah. it away. Talk about that. Man, that's a, whew, that's a that's a rough one to talk about sometimes, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, so this, is, this is Brad Harold. I'll talk about it. Okay, um, cool, cool. Well, yeah, that was initially, man, that was written um, clearly as a black film. Uh, honestly, as a vehicle for myself, I was going to star in it. And it's about, a, you know, a man who's dealing with his own issues with marriage. You know, he's always, right. he's, he's always been the guy that just ran a lot of women. And now his best friend who always ran with women with him is getting married. And he's about to be the last man standing. And it's about him kind of dealing with his own issues of fear of commitment. Um, and we had a, 
Love the script. Put a lot of personal things into it. We had a lot of fun. We tried to make some really colorful characters. Now, before we shot this film, before right before we got the money for the night before, because um, when Lionsgate picked it up, they changed the name to Bachelors. But before um, we had even pursued shooting that one, we had shot another film called The Last Laugh. Come on, man. Which Lionsgate changed to Come on, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, t- that was not my title. Right. So <laughs> that's another thing, you know, that was not my title. Yeah. But when we were shopping that, we had such a hard time and so many people were telling us, we're not looking for urban material. We're not looking for urban material. We're not looking for urban material. So Phil and I, we felt with this next one, because we were right about to prepare to go on a pre-production for the night before. Right. And we said, man, maybe we need to make it white so it'll be more commercial and make it an easier sale. And it, and it did not, it was the worst move we could have made. You know, it was a perfect example of trying to chase the market as right. opposed to being true to yourself and telling the story the way you want to tell it or you believe and believing in that. Right. But feeling, well, I got to cross over, you know, kind of compromising yourself, which yeah. I think the film still turned out great. I still love the film. I think it turned out awesome. I love it. But it's yeah. just, I think the heart the, and the goal, the, the message, the original intent of it, I think somewhere was lost in the pursuit of the money. And we, you know, I've been in this game for a long time. I, I want the crossover and that's not really what it's about, man. It's right. about being true to yourself. And it's nothing worse than something not going. And you're like, yo, had I just stuck to my guns and stuck to my gut, that's when it hurts the most. So I don't consider that a failure. I consider that, you know, we made a couple bucks. It did its thing, but we, I consider that a, a great lesson. No question. And in Hollywood, now, now let me say this. I also learned you have to be the artist and the whore. Now, the artist, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. the artist makes the movies from the heart, blah, blah. But if you're just the artist, eight times out of 10, you're going to starve. So you have to be the whore. You got to do your things, too, to make your money. But if you're just the whore, you're going to be unhappy. So you have to find that happy medium of being the artist and the whore. Certain things I'll do just for money, certain things I'll do to feed my artistic self, but I'm keeping it to the point where I can only do things to feed my artistic self, fine. But sometimes I have to pay bills. Now I've been forced to make my living in this industry. Now it may not be the living I, I want at the moment, but I'm able to make my living doing it. So sometimes I have to write things that I probably wouldn't have wanted to do or didn't resonate with me. But I, I approach each project with integrity and try to make it the best story that I can tell and make it a universal story that all people can connect right. to. You know what? That's great. I was going to ask you about how's it living out there in L.A. And you do some ghost writing, too, right? I do a ton of ghost writing. Hey, yeah. you know what? Because years ago, some cats brought a film back here to screen over on 87th Street. And I was looking at that movie. I mean, your name wasn't nowhere on it, but your work was all in it. I was like, oh, that wow. man wrote that. Might have been. Because you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tribute to your artistic style because if you've got something you know like you can look at something and say Spike Lee did that or or, uh, mm-hmm. or what's his name directed it and I looked at it I was like Kenny did that because wow. I know you ghost wrote and so I it, it had you all in it I was like the joke oh wow, wow. thank you for that yeah. yeah yeah I still ghost write man I, I think that's a I love doing it, honestly. Nice, sometimes nice. it's almost like writing under a pseudonym, you know, yeah. you can really stretch things and do things. Um, yeah. And it's been cool. Right. So, so along those lines, you, you've done a number of pitches, right? And uh, pitching ideas and stuff like that. Absolutely. Right. So what, can you just talk about some of the challenges? What makes for a great pitch? And I guess what makes for a bad pitch? <laughs> well, well, some will say a bad pitch is a pitch that doesn't get picked up, but I don't agree with that because I think right. you can have a great story and, and pitch it well, and they can turn it down for a thousand reasons. But what I personally think makes a good pitch is a pitch that is passionate and that paints a picture. Nice, yeah. It's right. passionate, like, right. oh, I'm feeling this. And I'm, you're painting a picture, well, wow, I can see this. I, I can see this. I think that's a great pitch. So you want to go in, you want it to be passionate and you want to paint a picture. 
what's important to a great story? What's important structurally from your viewpoint that makes a great story a great story? Wow. Um, I mean, yeah, I, you know, of course, I, I cut my teeth on three act structure. Right. And since then, I've discovered like the story spine. I've discovered the eight point structure. Right. And these are really all devices used to tell a great story. Right. At the end of the day, the best definition that I've heard for storytelling, and I said it earlier, is something that's emotionally charged. Well, the definition, an emotionally charged sequence of events with the beginning, right. middle and end. And nice. a thematic through. Yeah. So if it's emotionally charged, that means you have an emotional investment in this story. Just like sometimes you'll be seeing a movie, it might even be garbage. You're like, well, I just want to see how it ends. <laughs> right. it's emotional investment. You want to be there. Right. So that something makes an emotional investment, has a beginning, middle, and end, not necessarily in order, because if you saw Pulp Fiction and other films, the, the end is the middle, then the beginning, and right. the end. It doesn't have to be in that order, but it must entail a beginning, middle, and end. And it must have a sequence of events and a thematic through line. When I say theme, thematic, I mean a theme, a universal message that anyone can relate to or take something away from. So an emotionally charged sequence of events with a beginning, middle, end, and thematic through line. I try to judge stories by that. Because right. everything else as far as three-act structure, eight-act structure, story spine, those are just devices to get you to, to that spot. So, so let, let me ask you this. Uh, you've been writing for 30 years now, I'm sure, 30 plus. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have a problem going through that second act. You can just run right through that second act. It depends. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I have a problem. You know, sometimes I got to put it down and take a walk or, you know, sometimes I need to just have some inspiration or sometimes yeah. I'll ask some advice. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a student of storytelling, man. So I'll, I don't know if I'll ever be to the point where I have no problem <laughs> writing anything. You know, I never want to get to that point because there's nowhere to grow. <laughs> true, you know? true. Yeah, you always want to be growing. So, <laughs> yeah, I get challenged sometimes. But what has helped me is I've developed tools and devices and things to help me get through when I have writer's block or if I right. hit a structural, I hit a wall or my character is underdeveloped or something like that. And it just comes from constantly writing because... 80% of everything I write, nobody ever sees. If you really write a lot, most, and you guys know this, anything, if you write a lot, most things that you write, people won't see. Because right. it's like you're learning, you're messing up, it's garbage, time. it's chiseled. You get a big chunk of clay and you're chiseling it down to that fine story. So all that other clay, people's, people aren't going to see. But you have to go through all of that to get to the, to the yes. real core. Cool. Remind me so much of sports and like how the late Corby Bryant uh, would talk about how he would just shoot, shoot, shoot. And like Reggie Miller, another basketball player, they asked him, well, how do you get through a slump? He said, well, you just shoot. You shoot your way through a slump. And like the same thing, um, that writing is a craft and it's a skill that you develop. And even when you think you write in, you write in bad, quote unquote, it's actually maybe the foundation for breaking through stuff and working things out and just laying down a foundation for telling a great story. And it may, you, you may not even realize it, but it's still through, through, through the process of telling the story. Absolutely. You, you said it, brother. Yeah. Write through it. Keep writing. Keep writing. You know, sometimes I have to go work on something else to kind of get my mind off it and give me fresh ideas to come back to it. But yeah, it's about writing through it, man. So where do you want to be like in the next like 10 years? So where do you want to be in 10 years? Yeah, I mean, uh, I like to be doing everything I'm doing now just on a, a, a larger level, you know, uh, inspiring. I think that's the best thing that an artist can do, man, is inspire right. people. Yeah. I think that's the greatest thing. Yeah. So to have an opportunity to really inspire a lot of people like you guys, man, I feel like I've watched you guys kind of grow, you know, in the industry and in the arts and you guys are inspiring a lot of people, you know, you know, you know, I was a very, very beginner when I, I uh, even thought about beginning acting. I was talking to Carl about this when I ran into you guys into a club. Uh, yeah. So what was it? Oh, at the club. So okay. was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like that. You was that guy for me, you know, I, other inspirations like my high school band, teacher he ended up in the movies but that's when it, the spark really kicked in i'm like wait a minute he lives here in chicago and he's in the all these movies soul food groundhogs day huddle all i was like and then i so my mind started thinking that way and then here you and carl come and i was like what do you noops what do y'all do oh we're filmmakers wow <laughs> <laughs> Part in a couple of short films. We hadn't shot hardly nothing. Yeah. But that's the thing. You can't wait for other people to validate you. You have to. And True. I don't say that. Years ago, we said, man, we're filmmakers because that's what we do. 
We we don't have a film yet, but we're filmmakers. Hey, you so claim you it. Gotta define, man, you got to define yourself, man. You can't let people define you or tell you when it's okay to be something. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, yeah. look at you. You you said we're filmmakers, and, I was, and I'm still here, 23 years later. Man, you know, <laughs> that's what's up. Exactly. Hey, so we're almost out of time, man. So one more question. Uh, so what words, what advice would you give to a young person who's looking to have a career as an actor, writer, director? What advice uh, would, would you give them? Man. I would say define what it is that you want. But even more importantly than the what, ask yourself why. Right. Because the why you wanted is what's going to get you through all the bullshit. <laughs> why you want it. You're going to face a lot of bullshit. You're going to face a lot of rejection. You're going to face a lot of, man, is it worth it? It's that why. That's right. what puts you in the game. And that's why is different for everybody. But you have to figure out what that why is for you. And, and you know, they say the meaning of life is to give your life meaning. So get out there and give meaning to your life. Dope. Kenny Young, you are inspiring, brother. Got me fired up, dog. That's dope. Yeah. No question. Well, I tell you what, man, it's been a pleasure. And for uh, Brad Stevens and Harold Dennis. But, you know, right before we go, Kenny, is there something that we didn't touch that you think you might want to talk about briefly or anything? Uh... Man, to be honest, man, I was just so excited to be on the show, man. Just I, I'm telling you, to see my guys shine and doing their thing, I was like, man, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Uh, I think you guys are doing an awesome job. Uh, for viewers watching, these guys are, are, are 100%. They're real deal. You know, I love these. These are truly my brothers. We shine together. And I'm excited to see where the future takes them. And I'm sure they'll stay humble and grateful and keep shining. Thank you. You too, brother. You too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as Thanks. always, y'all. Dream big, dare to be great. Until next time, we'll talk to you. Peace. One love, y'all. Oh la la. Yeah.